So the new year is here and it means many people have some new fitness goals for themselves. But how can we make sure you actually achieve these new fitness goals? In a 2020 study about New Year's resolutions, it was found that about half of the individuals that set New Year's fitness goals considered themselves to be successful at the end of the year. Let's look into how you can be the type of person that achieves their fitness goals, and I will help you with that in this video by discussing 5 key actions you can take to achieve your fitness goals in 2022. The first action is also somewhat of a skill and that is being adaptable in your fitness approaches. The times we currently live in are simply unpredictable. We can have the best training and nutrition plan, but life can throw curveballs at us and we need to be able to manage that by staying flexible with our approach. For instance, I'm in the Netherlands now and gyms recently closed down. While it is not a fun situation, we have to work with what we got. By transitioning to effective home or park training, my Dutch clients are still able to stay on it. But even beyond things like gym closures, we need to stay adaptable. You might also have very busy work periods throughout the year or will spontaneously go on a few trips with your friends and loved ones. These are all things that could potentially interfere with your process if you are too rigid in your approach. That's why it's good to have a flexible mindset when it comes to your fitness. We don't want to plan things in excessive detail. Instead of having a rigid meal plan in which you time your meals on an hourly basis, maybe maintain a macro-based approach or aim to control your portion sizes instead. This way, even when something comes up like an unexpected dinner, you can still make things work and stay on track. And when it comes to training, start with a comfortable number of training days for yourself. If you can train 3-4 to four times per week, then start with 3 times per week. Once you have done 3 workouts consistently for a month, you have proven that you are ready for that next step and can increase the frequency to 4 times per week. The second action is related to training and that is to make sure you prioritize your performance whenever you lift weights. Sometimes when we work out, we actively pursue sweating more and trying to make a muscle feel sore. But if developing larger and stronger muscles is the goal, we should not chase fatigue, we should aim for performance improvements. As I have mentioned in previous videos, a muscle adapts and grows when you impose greater demands on it over time. This means progressively overloading your compound lifts. A training trap we want to avoid is that you start training for just getting a muscle pump. Many people think that if they take short rest intervals and do lots of drop sets, they will experience more muscle growth. But muscle growth actually happens when you train from a well-recovered state in which you can maximize your performance. A 2016 study showcases this well. When the participants rested 3 minutes between their working sets instead of 1 minute, they built more muscle because they were able to perform better in training. So keep this in mind the next time you train. Working out is not about making yourself feel tired, but about performing better and making sure that you exceed your previous performance levels. The third action is quite simple but also important and that is making sure that you take your sleep and recovery seriously. Your sleep impacts almost every aspect of your fitness. As indicated by research, proper sleep helps you perform better in training, you feel less hungry, you will have fewer cravings for sugary snacks when you sleep well, and even fat loss progress improves in a calorie deficit if you have better sleep. One of the best habits you can maintain in a fitness lifestyle is making sure that you have regular sleep and waking times. The body runs on a circadian rhythm and the more consistent your sleep and waking times are, the better your sleep quality and recovery tends to be. Next to proper sleep, also incorporate some moments of relaxation in your routine. Taking a weekend off or going on a vacation for a week might sound like something that could slow down your fitness progress, but this often has more benefits than you think. Mental stress is known to impair training performance. If after a hectic quarter in which you have a lot of work engagements and maybe social responsibilities, you take a week off to recover more, you'll be able to push yourself to a greater extent after the break. I experienced this when I traveled last summer. I only realized how powerful it can be to take a break once in a while once I actually got back from my trips and noticed a strength increase. The fourth action is related to nutrition and that is improving your food quality. I often speak about calories and controlling protein intake, but one of the most simple things you can do to more easily control your calorie intake and elevate your protein intake is to eat more nutrient-dense whole foods. No food in itself will make you directly gain or lose fat. But as indicated by research, focusing more on whole nutritious foods like whole grains, vegetables, fruits and lean meats makes it easier to control calorie intake because these foods are typically more filling per calorie. So if you have an approach that currently involves tracking your calories, also make a conscious effort this year to improve your nutrition quality by incorporating more whole foods. Next to filling yourself up more, the increased vitamins and minerals intake you will get will likely also improve your energy levels. The fifth action is related to hydration because it is often underestimated just how much of an impact hydration can have on your training performance. One research review suggests that athletes should prevent fluid loss of more than 2% of total body weight if they want to maximize performance. 
Another study looked directly at strength training and found that mild dehydration negatively affects strength performance on the back squat. So your hydration status has a direct impact on your performance. There's a simple way to see whether you are well hydrated. From the scientific literature, we know that the urine color chart gives a good indication of hydration status. If you are within points 1 to 3, you are hydrated just fine. Once you approach point 6 or higher, it's time to start prioritizing hydration. At the start of this video, I mentioned that I will give you 5 actions to achieve your fitness goals in 2022. But there's a bonus action that I would like to discuss because I believe that it's actually quite fundamental to reaching your goals. To be specific, the sixth bonus action is to find your why behind your fitness goals. It's great to have muscle growth or fat loss goals, but these goals by themselves typically aren't powerful enough to push you through to take action when times get rough. Why do you want to build muscle? Why do you want to get leaner this year? Is it to feel more energized and confident in your body? Or maybe you have children and you love the idea of later being a fit grandparent? It can be anything that drives you, but having a reason that is deeper than just an external physique goal can help you stay focused. Thinking about your underlying whys can help you delay immediate gratification and put in the work for long-term benefits, even when you don't feel like it. Like for me, my why is to be an example for you guys, and I also know that every action that I take in my life will be more enjoyable if I can do it in good health. So next to setting weight loss or strength goals, also think about your why when planning your fitness in 2022. And that was all for this video. I hope you got some useful insights on how you can tackle your fitness goals in 2022. Let's make it a great year. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in that next video.